We're at ID Studios in West Hampstead, um, and I've been recording The Snowman, originally by Raymond Briggs, adapted by Michael Mopergo, for audiobook, and it's the first time that The Snowman story has ever been realised in, in a literary form. It's, it, I didn't realise this, but it was only ever pictorial. It was the owl that woke Grandma. She lay there for a while, trying to go back to sleep, but the owl went on hooting, and the moon was shining brightly through her window. She just couldn't get back to sleep. So in the end, she got out of bed and went over to the window, hoping at least to see this noisy owl, because Grandma loved owls. And sure enough, she did see the owl flying round and round the oak tree. But she saw something else too. I think what has inspired Michael to to adapt the book were the amazing illustrations that um, that Raymond created. I mean, that was the the thing that that gave us the animation back in in the early eighties. I think it was nineteen eighty two that it was first broadcast. So he's been inspired by by the drawings, and and I had the, both the words and the drawings to work with. So um, I found it it's very it was a very moving experience. It, it took me back to my childhood. And I, as we were all discussing today, it's become part of the fabric of, of a British Christmas to watch the snowman and, uh, and now we can listen to the snowman. So, yeah, it was a real privilege to be here doing it. You know, one of the things that I think Michael has done, which maybe isn't uh, there in the animation quite so much, is to give James a, a fuller character. In this story, the little boy has um, a stutter. He's a solitary child who isn't necessarily the most popular kid in school and his relationship with the snowman somehow makes him overcome those those problems that he has as a kid so uh, he loses his stutter by the end of the story because the snowman gives him confidence and his friendship sort of guides him towards that place so I found that um, you know really moving and, and interesting and and you see a very good wholesome family and uh, you, it's a place that you'd like to go and a place that you'd like to, to live in and, and quite a simple existence really but this idea of the dreamscape of a child when you look out of the window and you see snow and, the, and what that becomes and, and the, the dream of, of Christmas Eve of, of every kid going to bed on Christmas Eve and dreaming about things and, and James has clearly got a very vivid imagination so all of those things are contained in this book. She saw James out there in the snow, in the middle of the moonlit night, out there in his dressing gown and slippers. She was about to open the window and tell him to come in at once before he caught his death of cold when she saw something else. Or rather, someone else with him. It was the snowman, the magnificent snowman James had made. I've slowly over the years had a, a very strong relationship with audiobooks from doing originally a, a reading of a te television series I was involved in, Robin Hood, to working on Dickens, to working on documentary. This is one of the first children's books I've done as an audiobook. It's obviously an expanding industry. I love being part of it. And I think it's, in a way, it's our first experience of, of storytelling isn't necessarily when we read it ourselves, it's when our parents sit down and read us a story if we're lucky enough when we're, we're children. And so I always approach it from that point of view as if I'm telling a story to a child on Christmas Eve. So I sort of put myself in the, the mind of, of Raymond or even Michael to, to read this. And I, I just hope that uh, it creates some magic in the minds of, of some children this year when they listen to it.